Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be doing a quick care guide on the Pseudocrinolabris nicolosi. Now these are a small West African cichlid that are originally native to the Congo River. Um, they're a mouth brooding cichlid which just adds to their interest. They're very very, um, they're dwarf cichlids. They're relatively small so you can keep them in I would say 10 to 20 gallon tanks quite easily. Um, they do well in groups and they're very, very um, interesting overall. Now their colors are very striking as you can probably see. The, the females are kind of muted, they're just brown. And then the males have this really, really nice elongated um, ba black ventral fin. And then they have like very, very nice red and blue splotched patterning. And they have a blue lip as well, which I find very interesting. Um, yeah, they're also very easy to take care of. Um, from what I've read, they they can be kept at most normal pHs, anywhere from 6 to around 8, so they can be kept in both hard and soft water. For temperature on these guys, I would keep them in the mid to high 70s. I'm personally keeping them right now. Um, the tank I'm keeping them in currently like fluctuates between 77 degrees and around 80. So I would try to keep them in there. I've seen really nice um, behavior and all that kind of stuff from them. So I would try to keep them there. They can tolerate low 70s and they can tolerate high mid 80s. But I personally think the sweet spot's around 80 or that, that kind of temperature. And so far they've been very easy for me to take care of. They eat pretty much anything I give them. I normally feed them just normal flake food. I, free, I feed um, some tetratopical granules. I also feed prime reef flakes, which is a saltwater food, but I personally like it for all my freshwater fish. Um, they also eat frozen food very well. They also like, um, I feed these fluvo uh, pleco pellets. Um, I think it's bug bites, pleco formula, or I think that's what it's called. They also really like that. So they're an omnivore. They like eating kind of algae and they like eating a lot of meat as well. So one thing to watch out about them is the males are pretty aggressive. Um, I have a lot of other dwarf cichlids as you can probably see in the video. Um, they kind of always kind of swim around and he's quite aggressive so he does like scare them off a lot. He's very territorial especially when they're spawning they are very territorial. So how spawning occurs is the male is kind of going to create like a little um, pit in the substrate that's why I would suggest using like a very lightweight substrate just so he doesn't damage his mouth when he's moving the substrate around. Uh, here I'm using Fluval Shrimp Statum. I think sand would work perfectly fine. Um, pretty much any other like lightweight, smoother gravel would do very well for them. So he basically digs a pit in the substrate. Sometimes they also use other flat surfaces like slate pieces and maybe some other rocks. And um, he kind of like guides the female over there. Once the females are kind of ready to breed, um, like the well conditioned and all that, he will kind of lead them over there. They'll like kind of do this weird dance. They kind of just spawn in the pit and then the female kind of catches the eggs once they're fertilized and she mouth breeds them. So I found this very interesting. This is one of the, this is the first actually mouth breeding cichlid I've ever kept. And so far they've been an absolute joy. So mouth brooding, um, from what I've read, takes six to nine days. I think it depends on temperature. I've already spawned these, so for me, um, it took around seven days before they started eating baby brine shrimp. So essentially both of the females, so I have, I have three of these guys. I have one male and two females. I would also suggest keeping them like that. The males are pretty aggressive towards the females, so just more females for each male. But I think the ideal ratio would be one male to three females, just so the aggression is spread out and none of them get picked on too much. But for me, both females spawned almost exactly at the same time. They were two days apart. So around five days into them spawning. So they were mouth rooting. They were doing completely fine. And then five days in, um, one of them just was not mouth rooting anymore. So I kind of got scared and I was a little bit worried about like, oh, she might eat the eggs. And the other one was still mouth rooting. So I just decided to pull her out and um, kind of like, get her to release the eggs 
Now that was very um, challenging to do. They are very, very good parents. Like this is the first time these, these fish have spawned um, and they're very good parents. So I basically, it, it took a lot of effort for me, but I had to like kind of coax her to let go of all the fry. And I pulled out, I think 18 live fry. Now they were probably two days away from being released into the tank. So I'm kind of happy that I pulled them out at exactly the right time. So they were doing quite well. I have them still. Now they're very, very big, which makes it very easy to feed them. They take baby brine shrimp almost right away. Um, they're very large. They grow really fast, honestly. Like I wasn't expecting them to breed this soon. The females that I got were three quarters of an inch when I first got them, which was two months ago. And now they're almost an inch and a half to two inches. So they almost doubled in size in just two months. So they do grow very quickly. Yeah, so I really like them. They're very interesting. They're really cool. I didn't actually know about them before. So I saw them on a website and I just was like, oh wow, these are really, really cool. So they're a little bit less known, at least to me, that's what I think. They're a little bit less known of a cichlid species. But yeah, I would really suggest try, trying them out. They're super cool. They're very interesting. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, definitely leave them in the comments down below. And um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.